Okay, uh, I just wanted to show you something I've been thinking about and playing around with. Um, it's called a reactive router. Uh, so the thing is, traditionally, you have this router um, which um, kind of like wraps your application. It's like you define this router at the top level and it starts like playing around with like in React what components you it should render. It has started to <clears throat> to grab data from the server to to like defer the rendering of, of your view layer. And it's kind of crazy because uh, you have all this other stuff not related to your router at all. Uh, that does the same stuff, like getting data from the server, changing state of the application, uh, and all that stuff. So what I'm trying to think about is like uh, making the router just doing the routing. It, its only job is to, uh, when a route occurs, it should just request a state change. Like if you would click a button in the UI, you would request a state change and like your controller layer, that being a dispatcher or a cerebral or, or whatever, uh, that, is, that, it, that is where it ends up. Uh, so the router is not able to go in and control your view layer directly or do data fetching or anything like that. It just requests a state change. Um, so what's really good about that is that we can think about the router like we think about an input. So in React, when you do changes to an input, that instantly appears. Uh, but what we do with React is that we actually uh, react to that input change and we put the value of the input inside our component or inside, ideally, inside our state store. And then we move that value back to the input. Uh, and what that allows us to do is actually go into our state store or into the state of our component and change that value. And that will be reflected in the UI. So you can, um, based on changes in your state, uh, application state, you can decide what should be in the UI. And my idea here is that it should be the same, same thing with a router. You should just be able to change a URL state inside your state store and that should be reflected in the UI and in the address bar. So uh, this code is using the Cerebral controller with React and Immutable Store. So what you can see here is that I've set up a few signals. Uh, so I have an index routed, foo routed, bar routed, message routed. This is just to play around with. Uh, and what it basically does is that it just sets the URL inside the state store, the immutable store. Uh, and when I go to message routed, it will also set the message ID uh, based on some params. I also have a signal called URL changed. And this means that whenever I trigger, I, I want to change the URL. I do not talk to the router or, or anything like that. Um, I just trigger a signal, which I would do with anything else, like clicking a button, changing an input, whatever. Uh, and it just changes the URL inside my state store. And then I have the router, the reactive router. And you set up your URLs like you would, like traditionally. Um, and here you see you have this dynamic routing and stuff like that. And it just uh, triggers requests to the controller, uh, the cerebral controller. Um, and then we can see that whenever the controller emits a change, it will actually set the URL uh, on the router. And when we are using the debugger and we are kind of like remembering state and stuff, we are silently setting the URL so that we do not trigger a new, um, a new controller request. Okay, uh, so that was a lot of theory, just let's see this in action. So I have this really ugly site here, um, but when I refresh now, we can see that uh, the foo routed uh, signal was triggered, and that's because I'm on, on foo. Now when I hit uh, bar, it will change the URL, and we can see it's reflected in, in the UI, and I can move back to foo and back to bar. 
So what's kind of cool about this now is that uh, since we are changing the state inside the store, I can um, do this uh, debugger thing where I traverse the state back in time. Uh, so what we can see here is I actually triggered a URL changed signal, which set the URL. And this made the, the, um, the router react to that and it triggered a new signal based on that URL, which does all the data fetching and, and changes that I want to. Uh, but what's really nice is that when I do this traversing now, you see the URL actually changing uh, up there. Um, so you get a reflection of how this actually worked. But the really good thing now is that the router is just doing routing. It doesn't mess around with, with your view layer and it doesn't mess around with your model layer um, or, or your controller layer. It just does a request like anything else. Okay, so that was just some theory. I'm still experimenting with, with this stuff and Maybe it will be really nice and maybe it won't be that nice, but uh, I think it has some, some really good benefits. So check out the repo if you want to, to read more about this stuff.